Bye bye, Lady Musgrave. We are sailing north up the east coast of Australia from Lady Musgrave Island to Great Keppel Island. It's 94 miles, which for us means sailing overnight. Sailing overnight is always tiring, but sunrises at sea can be spectacular and can really pick us up after a long dark night watch. Great Keppel Island, this is where you're supposed to anchor on the northern side, it's supposed to be the best anchorage. But it doesn't look very good, there's one boat in there and they're rolling all over the place because the swell's coming in from the northeast. So we're gonna try and head around the end of the island and see if we can find somewhere a bit more sheltered to anchor around there. Unfortunately, the next anchorage wasn't much better, but that just encouraged us to get ashore and enjoy the hikes on the island. always find something interesting on a walk. They're very cool praying mantis. Well they've only got one leg less than it should have. I nearly stepped on him but he moved and I saw him. One of the things we love most about Australia is how different the wildlife is compared to what we're used to. We can happily stop and spend an hour watching an echidna, a praying mantis, or even an evil looking snake lizard type thing. We're sailing down the Queensland coast. We left Great Keppel Island this morning and we're heading to Pearl Bay and we've got absolutely stunning sailing conditions. We put the spinnaker up when it got light this morning and we've been doing seven knots ever since. It's fantastic sailing. We're making a pretty quick passage up this section of the coast because the weather forecast for four or five days time is some really big breeze. Um, in fact, the two weather models don't agree and one of them is indicating a possible cyclone. So we want to be somewhere safe in case that does come up. So uh, we're only gonna have one evening in Pearl Bay and then we're gonna go straight on. Pearl Bay is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It's in a military training area. So there's no phone reception, no VHF reception, no chance of getting a weather forecast. Hence, we only want to stay there one night and then we'll move on to somewhere where we can check the weather and see if that big wind is still coming. Um, so we'll move on from there up to the Percy Islands and from there we go to Mackay, which is a apparently a category four safe, cyclone safe marina, but we'll see.
amazing how much of this coastline that we've sailed past, like hundreds and hundreds of miles where there's just no development, just beaches and nature, it's amazing. Drop the spinnaker now and it's a really narrow entrance into this anchorage so we're just going to take it slowly. It looks beautiful. Very craggy. It's a military training area here, so we haven't got the dinghy down as you can't really go very far ashore, but it's just gorgeous being on the boat. An absolutely stunning sunset this evening. It's been three years of cruising, but it's still exciting and magical to be sitting on the boat looking at a sunset like this. And you can't get here any other way than by boat. We set off at dawn again this morning and it's been another great day sailing. It's been really nice to be sailing during the day for a change. Not doing overnights, which means both of us can be in the cockpit together having a chat, playing a game and looking at the view. So Amy was going to say, holy moly, it's a bit rolly. And as soon as I turn the camera on, it's gone nice and flat. Maybe we should leave the camera running all night. Then we get a nice sleep. We're just approaching Middle Percy Island. There are so many places to stop up this coast of Queensland that we can't stop at them all. But this one's been recommended to us by lots of different people. So excited to see what there is there. We did well fishing today. Although to say that would really be a whopper as well because uh, we didn't catch this one. Friendly fishing boat just came by and said uh, they're up to their bag limit and would be like a fish. I mean, who's going to turn down that? Hopefully it'll be tasty. A dewfish apparently. A dewfish. Never had one of these before. It's going to be messy. First we'll slit open his belly and gut him. Need a sharper knife. Gutted him. Now we get to fillet him. It's the right length. Because it's blunt. There's a lot here. You might have to share this with some of the other boats in the anchorage. They were offered it too. They were offered it too. They said no. It's probably because they, I don't know, maybe they didn't want to fillet it. But maybe they'll say yes to a filleted one. Right, one fillet, not very expertly done, but there's so much meat on this fish, even a rubbish fillet it can get a lot off. Oh, well, you've done a pretty good job. So 
such an idyllic location. It's like your own treasure island. It's a beautiful beach, coconut trees, and even a little lagoon you can go into if your boat doesn't draw too much. It's like something out of a book. So this is the map of the island. We're currently in West Bay and we're going to hike up to the homestead. So we'll take the long track up and the short track back. This is the lagoon. If your boat can take the bottom, then you can come in here and be completely protected from the swell in the main anchorage. They're really difficult to get on camera, but there are so many butterflies here. The main aim of our hike is in fact to get high enough up the island that we can get a phone reception for a weather forecast to see how that potential cyclone is shaping up. What you do as a sailor for a weather forecast this is the only place on the island that you can get phone reception and we've been wanting to keep a close eye on this weather system that's coming. It's still coming through, so if we leave tonight then we should be able to get into shelter before it comes in. So that's the same as it was forecast before, so yeah, that's all good. Same. And the GFS and the European models are aligning now, which is looking good. And that cyclone that was potentially going to form doesn't look like it's forming. No, it's only getting up to probably 30, 40 knots. Yeah. Still not something we want to be out here in. So this is Percy Island Yacht Club. There's a long history of boats visiting this island and it's tradition to, for people to leave something with their boat name on. I've seen things a little bit like this before but never quite on this scale. This is incredible. There's so many names here, they're even on the roof. You can even get up into the roof. More space for signs. What an awesome spot. There is one last thing we have to do before we leave and that is to leave our name here in this A-frame shed. There's so much inspiration and creativity amongst all the other boats that we've been racking our brains for how to do it and we've decided that we're going to make a very traditional coconut boat. Looking good, Amy. Hmm. Got a logo on one side and our names on the other.
Voilà We've got to find somewhere to put it now. Let's see how long it lasts. We'll have to come back to see how long it lasts. Yeah, on our second lap, eh? I feel a bit bad for leaving Minnie Florence here. She's in good company. A lot of people ask us how much it costs to lead this life travelling by boat. We have now spent three years sailing full time and have made it halfway round the world. We've tracked every single penny that we spent since leaving England and we now feel that we're ready to answer that question. So next time we're going to try and give some clarity as to how much it really costs to sail around the world full time. Thank you to all of our patrons for your support, especially our star patrons, Bill McNamara and Kate and Peter Atkins. 